morning and um, welcome to our meeting that is hopefully, as Jeff mentioned, our last fully virtual meeting. Um, for those of you that are visiting, if you want to be added to our list, um, our email list, you can drop it in my chat box or just the general chat box and we'll make sure to add you um, for future information. Um, I'm sure there'll be more discussion about um, return of meeting next week, but for those of you who are from far away, I believe we're still having partial um, virtual meetings, so there's no need to worry about um, losing this connection. Um, for today's um, centering moment, I've chosen a poem by Amanda Gorman as we move forward. Those of you know her um, by her writings from um, the inauguration last year and her messages of hope that she brings. Um, and this poem's called Closure, um, which I think it's very fitting for the closing of hopefully a permanent virtual meeting. To begin again isn't to go backwards, but to decide to go. Our story is not a circle carved, but a spiral shed, shaped, spinning, shifting inward and outward in ad, ad infinitum. Like a lung on the bank of speech, breathe with us. We disembark both beside and beyond. Who we were, who we are. It is a return and a departure. We spiral on, pushing up, and out like a growing thing, making its form out of earth. In a poem, there's no end, just a place where the page glows wide and waiting, like a lifted hand poised and paused. Here is our bond, unbordered by bone. Perhaps love is how it feels to breathe the same air. All we have is time, is now. Time takes us on. How we are moved says everything about what we are to each other and what are we to each other, if not everything. We'll now have a special hymn by Lee.
Thank you, Lee. We will now have our reading for Hope and Healing by someone who brings so many of us hope and healing, Laura J. Bellinger. Good morning. I have a reading from Kate um, Bowler, who is an author and professor of um, history and Christianity at Duke Divinity School. This is a blessing for when you're tired of waiting for the world to get better. Blessed are we who wait with bated breath, who wait for something new to be born, for new hope or new joy or new life. Blessed are we whose patience grows thinner by the day, we who are tired of the world as it is and all of its heartache and joy, I'm sorry, all of its heartache and loss and hopelessness. We who want more, more hope, more joy, more life. Blessed are we who sit here to wait at the still point between desire and expectation. We who are making room for more of you, oh God. Surprise us with joy in the midst of the mundane, mundane, abundance in the midst of so much scarcity and presence in the midst of chaos. We have quieted our souls to listen, to wait for you, oh God. Thank you. And now is the time for us to have announcements. Be sure to hit the unmute button. Tonight is our February monthly meeting for business. It will be at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Uh, look for the link, should be coming out um, later today. Hope to see everyone there. Stacey. And I have, oh, I'm sorry. Stacy, what? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Steve. Okay. Stacy wanted me to announce on behalf of the uh, Young Rural Dreamers uh, Scholarship Program. That was the email that Joanne had uh, sent out just to remind you that uh, we're requesting donations for the uh, Coco Da program for the um, university students down in Nicaragua. There'll be 15 students this year. And uh, we need your um, donations by Saturday, March 5th, sent to Stacy Denny's home. So we, we encourage you to uh, participate in that program. Thanks. All right, I have the announcement that everybody's been waiting for was we will open for in-person worship next Sunday. Uh, we ask that you wear a mask, uh, preferably an N95. Um, <clears throat> those of you that are on line, don't worry, we are not leaving you. We have a, a, an approved system for going hybrid. So we will uh, be online and in person. So um, there is excitement in the air. We're glad to see you, you all next week, either online or in person. The other announcement I have is that uh, our survey is, has eight more days for it. And we have been blessed with lots of responses. If you have not answered our survey yet, please go uh, online. I think the, the uh, link will be coming up again today. Um, if you just see us online, we still would like to hear your uh, answers to our survey because you are very important to us and we're wanting to know how you feel about being online and all. So those are our two announcements we're excited to give. And uh, if you have any questions, please email me and I'll be glad to answer. Thank you. I think the lull in conversation maybe means that all announcements are over. Um, if we miss one, then shoot it in the chat box. Um, as we get ready for our offering, um, I want to invite you, if you feel the need to donate um, monetarily, to do so, um, you can do so on PayPal, in which, while some of you are giving announcements, I was looking for uh, my phone to show you, and I had the um, meeting order up and could not find my phone because I was using it for something else. 
Um, hopefully you all are tired of that as well. Um, fairfieldgiving at gmail.com is where you can um, give. You can also mail a check to Fairfield Meetings. Um, that's also listed on our website. May the monetary gifts given today be used for light. May the gifts of our time and work this week be used to share the light with others that is free. If all hearts are clear, I might share these words before our second hymn. In a time on the brink of war unfolding, when our hearts scream for truce, compromise, for ego and greed abandoned, may we find and rest in the peace of that which is holy, the peace that is greater than our human understanding. And now Lee will give us our second song. Good morning. Um, thank you for asking me to speak. Um, I'd like to start off uh, by reading a short um, piece from Psalm 4610. Be still and know that I am God. <clears throat> First experienced this verse several years ago um, when reading Everything Belongs by Richard War in a, a Sunday school class. Um, he suggested using this verse to center down by saying, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be. Be. When Lynn asked me to speak today, um, she said she understood that I had been speaking at a um, Hadley meeting once a month to fill in because they don't have a pastor. Uh, but I, I was a little reluctant, but agreed. Um, obviously, I'm talking now. Um, and my reluctance stemmed from sort of an unwritten agreement that I have with the folks at Hadley. Um, tolerate certain idiosyncratic things that I do, uh, but also a special friend that I have. Um, and this special friend is someone who I consult and talk with and discuss ideas that often results in, in topics. And I guess that isn't really highly unusual. Um, many people do that with a friend or wife, and I also talk with Rhonda. Um, but my friend is a squirrel. Um, though I, I want to say a very articulate, thoughtful, reflective squirrel that I have a long-term relationship with. And if you have a long-term relationship with a squirrel, there, there's a couple things to remember. And so I'm going to give you an example of one of these. Um, the squirrel and I decided to organize a silent workshop for a number of squirrels 
Um, you would think as a psychologist, I would have realized that wasn't a good idea, um, but I went ahead anyway. Um, it lasted about five seconds for the squirrels are running around, jumping, arguing, doing all sorts of things. And, um, you know, you have to remember the rule, squirrels are squirrely. That's one important one, but there's another one too. Uh, the second one is about squirrels sometimes can be a bit deceptive. They don't always tell you exactly the truth. However, their tails cannot lie. Anytime you're in a relationship with a, a squirrel, you should really remember to watch the tail because that tail can't lie. So, now I'd like to talk to you about one of my experiences with squirrel. Um, it happened last fall. I was sitting um, and I was doing this be still and know that I am God, center down because it was a beautiful fall day, sunny, warm. It's really good for reflection and meditation. And as I was doing that, I, I heard the tap, tap, tap on my door and I looked up and there was squirrel. First thing, I looked at Pearl's, uh, squirrel's tail and it wasn't waving around an anger and fury like he does sometimes when he comes to talk to me and it wasn't wrapped around his neck like a um, a boa that he does when he's going to try and trick me into something and it, he wasn't anxiously picking at it which he does when there was something wrong in the animal kingdom in our backyard that day the tail was straight his ears was back he was tense i knew there was something serious going on I opened the sliding door, and before I could even say what's up, Squirrels yells at me. I gave me an order. I gave you an order. I was a little irritated that God would choose to speak to the squirrel about something between us before God spoke to me. But you know, God does what God does. Squirrel then said, "Well, God wants us to share our spiritual." Experiences. Oh, well, okay. I said, well, squirrel, if we're going to sh share, let's center down, sit down and be still. And of course, my plan was that squirrel couldn't do that. Um, that he would run off in a few minutes. So we went out in the patio and I sat down and he jumped up on the table and grabbed my thumb. He likes to grab my thumb. Um, and Looked me straight in the eye and then began to wait. Now, when squirrel waits, you have to understand what that means. He let go of my thumb, he ran up my left arm, knocked on my head, knocked on my forehead, looked in my eyes, jumped over, went down my right arm. And at that point, I was just saying, okay, come on, this can't happen. And I was about ready to stop. But then squirrel looked at me and said, okay, God is here. What are you going to tell me? And sure enough, a spiritual event in my life jumped into my head. I guess I had underestimated squirrel spirituality rather significantly. So I would like, I, I want to share this experience with you too. But you need a little bit of background about me to understand it. Um, I spent my uh, professional career working with child abuse issues. Um, primarily sexual abuse, and primarily with uh, individuals who do the sexual harm to others. 18 of those years was at Plainfield at the Indiana Boys School when it was a juvenile facility. And as we did services and treatment for these kids who have done sexual harm, we would often have what's called a clarification session. A clarification session is when the individual who did sexual harm sits down with the people he did sexual harm to, in this case, the victim, the parents, the family, and clarify how they harmed the victim and the family. The young person abused then would need to answer what question the victim, family members, the parents had of them about harm that they had inflicted on the family. In these sessions, I was fortunate to 
experience the resiliency and love that holds families together and how love helps a family recover from one family member's harmful behavior. I always found these experiences to be a privilege that a family would allow me to witness their hearing. Now, an experience I wanted to tell the world and to you was one of those clarification sessions, but not a typical one. My mom called me at boys' school. She wanted to have a meeting with the young man who had sexually assaulted, assaulted her six-year-old daughter. What was different about this one was the youth was a stranger to this woman and the child. A type of assault we identify as stranger sexual assault that is unusual and more difficult to intervene with successfully. Not one that we would really normally have considered for clarification because there just wasn't a connection. The mom insisted. She had questions she had to ask and assured me she was not acting out of revenge or anger. I was hesitant. I really, I really believe in reconciliation and, and these sort of activities when there's been harm done. But I really didn't have much faith in this young man. He had a significant criminal history. He was aggressive within the institution. And someone we had had to provide special services to just to sort of keep him going um, within the institution. But I consulted with my colleague and a young man, and a decision was made to go ahead. I phoned the mom and we set up a time. The morning she arrived together in a room, I introduced them. And that was the last thing I said in that session. What happened next was that God was clearly present with this young man and this mom. You know, not a sense, not a vague feeling. God was clearly present, a clear, loving hand, helping the young man and mom through this incredible, difficult conversation. The mom read question to the young man with tears. Her strength, courage, and love for the daughter was real in those questions, and also her fears and questioning of herself. The young man answered in a way that I never would have expected him to, never thought he was capable of. In the end, the mom left finding some relief and a vision on how to help her daughter. And all I had to do was be, be still and know God would take care of them. The, uh, the mom, the young man, and God gave me a gift of being present as a compassionate witness to the relationship between the mom, the young man, and God. This is one of the strongest experiences of the presence of the Spirit that I ever experienced in my life. God guided this mom and young man to come to terms with this horrible event and each other in a painfully honest manner. It was a gift from the spirit to be present, to be there. What happened that day remains a mystery to me, but a mystery that I really embrace. Well, when I was done, saying this, explaining this squirrel. Um, the squirrel was sitting there listening to me, reflecting as his tail sort of swayed back and forth. And he, and, he, and he said, you know, human, he always calls me human. I, I don't know why, but he just does. Humans are hard to get. They are hard to understand. And they, what they do to each other and then how they handle it, uh, well, thank you for telling me. 
It's hard to put together, but thank you. We had a moment of, of silence together. Then he looked at me and his tail was swinging and swaying in excitement. His eyes became bright and he said, my turn to tell you about my spiritual experience. A deep breath. And he said, well, you see, when I'm up there running around in that tree, you might just think I'm running crazy. Doing nothing but squirreling around. But sometime when I'm up there in those trees, running like crazy, I see a branch that God put there for me. I can see the great I am right there. They're giving me a gift, a precious gift, a branch just for me from God. I see it like the arm of God just waiting for me, and I home in on that branch, and I jump right at the end of that branch, right to the hand of God, real right now, right here, God. God then winds up and throws me in the air. And I know, I know, those few seconds after God launches me, I feel so good. And the air rushing through my fur, my ears back, legs spread, almost flying and knowing. I know in every bone of my body that I'm a squirrel and that God is here. God is letting me know that I am and it's good to be a squirrel. I know that. That knowing is a gift to know who you are. So right at the top of the ark, a stillness come over me. I'm still and can just be not paying any attention to anything, but right now, it's the most peaceful and complete feeling possible. I can be, just be, it is so beautiful. It may only last for a second, but it's so important that I've got to focus on landing because sometimes landing on a branch is really hard and I can fall, but, but that's beside the point. The point was being in the air. Then squirrel paused for a second, gave me a knowing look, and he was gone, running down the table, across the yard, up a tree, and he was gone, leaving me with a lot to reflect and since I was sort of doing that anyway, I sent her to begin to reflect on it. You know, the young man taught me a lesson that spirituality is not just for the seeker, the godly, the faithful, but for everyone. The young man was a thoroughly human vessel and most certainly a damaged one. But at that moment, God gave him the grace of spirituality to be present, to know what to say, to express the love of God, even through that imperfect human vessel. And reflected on the mom. Understand that God is there present, helping us answer our most difficult questions. You know, it's like when God questioned Job after all the horrible things that happened to Job and his friends deserting him. And God said to Job, where were you when I created? A hard question from God. But I hear a gentle God in that question. Spur Job to have the courage experience the pain like this mom and anguish in response to the inexplicable problems we so often inflict upon each other. Asking, can we be present with that pain with the help of God? God reassures us that God is there in the present, touching us with grace but that we experience the comfort during the painful questions in life. And Squirrel, talk to me about the ecstasy of spirituality. An entire different sort of spirituality. It reminded me 
that we are called Quaker because early on, when a Quaker felt the spirit of God, it was such a all-encompassing experience to be quake. Literally, their body responded to God. It was much more like what I read in Psalm 150. Praise God with the sound of trumpet. Praise God with the harp and lyre. Praise God with the timbrel and dancing. Praise God with the strings and pipes. Praise God with the clash of cymbals. Praise God with resounding cymbals. Definitely not the still small voice that Elijah heard in the book of Kings. That Quakers often quote. A very different spirituality than that. A loud, boisterous spirituality. So when Quakerism arose, the notion at that time was that spirituality was the experience of a few to be monitored by the church hierarchy. What was the most radical belief of the Quaker for that time was God gracing everyone with spiritual experiences, as in the Gospel of John, the true light that gives light to everyone. Quakers had many spiritual experiences in many ways, as we do now. Spirituality is an experience that happens in the body without words. Spirituality is an experience with any emotion, Sorrow, ecstasy, contentment, frustration, fear, hatred, the entire spectrum of human emotion. Spirituality is an experience with meditation, mindfulness, and thought. Spirituality is an experience we each may have individually with God. Spirituality is an experience we may have within our community with God. Spirituality is a gift of God's grace. God touching us. God may touch our body. God may touch our emotions. God may touch our minds. God may touch our community. The only question is, are we open to the way that God chooses to touch us and our community? And are we willing to allow God the freedom to enter our experience so God's grace works through us? Rejoice in the gift from God of spiritual experience. We allow ourselves to be, to be, to be still, to be still and know, to be still and know that God is, to be still and know that God is love.